They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters, MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The Pyramid. Tom Thomas, can I open my eyes? Not yet. Hurry, will ya? That's it. I'm ready for the contest. Ta-da! Wait, that's a pastry. This is a pastry, Nolik. But this is an Egyptian pyramid. Oh, wow. Doesn't it look just like an anthill? Sure does. I remember when Grand Poos told us that inside of those is a labyrinth and a mummy of a sparrow. No, a pharaoh. The Egyptian pyramids are simply amazing ancient structures. The biggest one of them is the Great Pyramid of Cheops. It's more than 4,000 years old and over 100 meters tall, like a 40-story building. How it was possible to build such a giant way back then is still a mystery. There were no hoisting cranes in those days. Some people believe that the pyramids were built by aliens, but I have a feeling that they couldn't have been built without the Fixies' help. So, is there a labyrinth in there? Of course. Show me. You joking? I just put it together for the contest. No way I'm gonna break this apart. Hey, isn't that a way in? Where are you going? I'm just gonna look at the labyrinth. And the mummy! Mummy, what are you talking about? Well, which way now? Stop, you'll get lost. I won't get lost. So, I think I'll go this way. And then this way. Come back, Nolik. I was already here. And I was here. Oh. 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 I did get lost. You were right. What? Hey there. Do you know where Nolik is? In there. He went mummy hunting, and he got lost. Mummy? Whoa! A real one? Class! Don't! No, like, yoo-hoo! Are you in here? No! Then where? Who knows? Who builds labyrinths like this anyway? Hey, nobody asked you to go in my labyrinth. Who are you talking to in there? Digit, Fire and Nolik are inside, and I need to go to school now. Nolik! Fire! Well, I, for one, have never gotten lost in a labyrinth because I know the rule for getting out. You need to always keep your hand on the wall. I can find them for you. Where are you guys? Over here! <laughs> I forgot which of these walls I was touching with my hand. Did you find them? No! And I got myself completely lost in here! Tom Thomas, you've got school today, don't you? Yeah, I do. Only I got a pyramid full of fixies. <laughs> it's like an anthill. Mm-hmm. The first one wanted to go mummy hunting. The second one went looking for the first one. And the third for both. We're lost in here! And I've got school to get to. Wait, maybe you could just try to shake them out. Good idea! <laughs> <laughs> Joking! <laughs> you have string? Watch. This way you don't get lost. When you're going on a trip, think about how to keep from getting lost and how to find your way back. Don't just rely on maps and the GPS in your phone. Take a compass with you. It will show you the cardinal directions without needing phone service. You can also find north and south by looking at the sun, stars, or even an anthill in the woods. Take a good look. The slope that's gentler faces south, and the one that's steeper faces to the north. And if you find yourself walking through a labyrinth, don't get lost. Just walk with one hand always touching the wall, and eventually you'll get out. Another way to get through a labyrinth is to tie a rope at the entrance and unreel it along the way. Then, you can follow its path back out. Here's the first one. And the second. And Nolik? Oh! A mummy! Is it alive? It's me, Nolik! <laughs> but I couldn't find yours! That's because there's none in there. What? You mean I got lost in there for nothing? You're in such 
such a hurry. You didn't listen to what I said. But without a mummy, how can you win? Oh, then maybe you could be my mummy. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, did you win a prize? Uh-huh. My pyramid won. And here's a special extra prize for being the only one of us who knew how to get out of the labyrinth. Again? Another box of those pastries? That's fine with me. I really love them. They're awesome. I wish Fixies ate food. What a shame. Then I'll give some to your mommy. <laughs> the backpack. Right, homework's all done. Time to play? Tom Thomas, is that how you pack your backpack? Why not? What's wrong with it? I don't know how you think you're going to find anything at all in there. I will, too. Then go and find mm, your ruler. Here you go. An eraser? Hang on, I'll get it. Where is it? Uh, you can't find it. What a shame. It's because this backpack is so lousy. The backpack is just fine. If you don't want to lose anything, you gotta pack it carefully. Or have a pack mat that can just hand everything to you. Oh, yeah! That's just what I need a pack mat. Only fixies have pack mats. And I'm gonna have one. I'll make my own. <laughs> There's no way. Way? Because I'll help him do it. Sure, no, like. <sighs> A backpack is a bag with shoulder straps attached. It was invented to make it easier to carry heavy loads for long distances and also for freeing up the hands. Backpacks help us maintain good posture and avoid slouching by putting the load's weight onto our back muscles and our spine. And you can fit so many things into a backpack, especially if the backpack has lots of separate compartments and everything is packed nice and neatly. The first backpacks were quite heavy and uncomfortable. They were made out of wood and leather. These kinds of backpacks were worn by ancient hunters. Later on, lighter backpacks appeared that were made out of canvas and became quite popular with travelers and soldiers. Today's backpacks are so light that even kids can carry them. <sighs> Testing of the world's first pack of design, especially for humans, begins! Ready? Ready to go. First thing out of your backpack, uh, I mean pack mat, an eraser. Got it. Watch me. Cool. A pen, your blue one. Got it. Tongue. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We're experiencing technical problems. We need a break. Testing of the world. I know, first. I know. Just start. Take out the eraser. Mm hmm. <laughs> we'll say you did it. Take out the blue pen. Oh, wow. The ruler's next. He'll come later. Testing. All right, already. Let's get it started. Go ahead. The eraser. We've seen that twice already. The blue pen. Can you take out the ruler? Sure, I can. Drum roll, please. Whoa. It's not possible. Let me see. Hmm. Now I get it. Why don't you take out your science book? Science book. <laughs> Cuckoo, did you get the textbook? <laughs> There's no way. It's huge. Yeah, some inventors you are. <laughs> your invention calls for a little improvement, and I know what it is. What? Just make sure that when you put things into your backpack, you do it neatly. Do it neatly. Takes forever and it's boring. I'm gonna show you how to make it fun. Ha -ha. 
Whenever it's a school day, a backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. Your pencils, books, and papers will fit inside indeed. We'll fit inside, we'll fit inside, we'll fit inside indeed. Without a backpack on your back, you won't get by. You Whenever you go hiking, a backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. Whatever you've collected will fit inside indeed. We'll fit inside, we'll fit inside, we'll fit inside indeed. Without a backpack on your back, you won't get by. You won't succeed. But with the backpack on your back, The pencil. Well done, Tom Thomas. Your mom's birthday's today and you're still sleeping. Hey, what's that? It's a drawing, a portrait of his mom. In my opinion, this mom doesn't look very much like Tom Thomas's mom. Maybe he didn't get to finish the picture yet. He was tired and passed out. This is not good. We gotta do something. Ah, we can help him. The pencil's right here. A pencil has a lead inside. It's the lead that makes the drawing. Only lead doesn't grow on trees. It's made out of a mineral called graphite that's mined out of the Earth's crust. But how does the lead get inside a pencil? It's simple. Pencils are made with rods of lead and two wooden boards. Grooves are cut into the boards and the lead's placed in them. The heads are glued together and cut into pencils. The artist's tool is ready. Uh, 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 this isn't gonna work. Oh, give me a place to stand, and I shall move the pencil through the air. Try and get it closer to the drawing. Uh, you gotta lift it up a little. You gotta push it harder. But, uh, no, like, we're blockheads. Look, there's a pencil sharpener. A piece of lead. That's all we need. All right, let's check out how it was done by the old scores. By the great masters, like us. Yeah, she could use a little more hair. And a hat, too. Beautiful. And your sock has got to be in there. Yeah, let's keep drawing. Tom Thomas, are you still sleeping? Fixies? No need to thank us. Uh, where is my drawing? What have you done to it? If Mom sees this piece of art you created, she'll go and faint. I know it. From happiness, right? Fright's more like it. Does that look like my mom? Uh, well, then give it to your dad. If your dad won't faint, I know it. But it's my mom's birthday, not my dad's. You gotta be kidding me. There's also a famous painting like that. It's called the Black Square. It's a classic. You don't think she'll like it? People want to remember the highlights of their lives. And so they take photos of nature, of their families, of themselves, even of the food they eat. People have been doing this even before the invention of photography, by drawing. An artist might draw the sun, a river, some apple trees, and soon he's made a landscape. And if the apples aren't on trees, but on a plate next to a vase, cup, or basket, then a still life is what it's called. If a person's in the center, then it's called a portrait. And when artists make pictures of themselves, it's called a self-portrait. 
Of course, it's easier for us to take a quick photo of things we pass along the way. But just like the old masters, we put a piece of our souls into our drawings. And if you draw more often, you'll see it for yourself. I promise you that. Maybe you could just give her one of your older drawings. Maybe you should just erase the mess you made of this one. That could work. Ugh. Erasing's gotta be easier than drawing. Ugh. Whatever. There's no way you can make it worse. Ugh. Hey, I think I know a way you can fix it. You can use the eraser for drawing. A portrait. Uh, portraits don't seem to work out too well for us. But a still life drawing is a piece of cake. Super! Uh-huh. Pretty good, right? Tom Thomas! Everything's on the table for breakfast. Mom, happy birthday. I drew this present for you. Thank you, Tom Thomas. What a lovely still life. So unusual. I tried really hard. We'll hang it up on the wall. Now, let's go eat. What would Tom Thomas have done without us? Yeah. Whenever you get into a jam, your real friends will always show up to rescue you. The Jewel. Tom Thomas, it's time to eat. Where did it go? Chusaka. Did you see this tiny little... I can't believe now I'm asking a dog. Tom Thomas, are you looking for us? Hey, Fixies, maybe you can help me. One of these stones is missing. And so? And so, this pin is very valuable. And so's the stone. If I don't find the stone soon, it's going to be the end. Honey, your lunch is getting cold. There's no reason to panic. Your precious stone will be found. Wait a sec. Can stones really be precious? Of course they can. Gemstones are the most rare and beautiful of all stones. But it's not easy to find them. Diamonds, emeralds, rubies, sapphires. People find them underground and inside of mountains. Brave divers go to the bottom of the sea to find pearls. People have performed heroic acts and committed daring crimes to get these precious jewels. The magical shine of gems can both enchant and ruin. Remember, only gems acquired honestly bring happiness. I can't find it anywhere. Maybe Chusaka took it. She saw that it was valuable, and... Um, you're right. Chusaka? Give us back the gem, all right? Give it back, we said. Why are you making Chusaka angry? Because she has to give the stone back. What stone, Simka? One that calls a ton. Dogs are supposed to keep treasure safe, but this one eats them. Maybe you didn't look carefully. For example, did you check inside that flower pot? <laughs> the sticking's just a waste. How could it end up in here? Because I know this is where we left it. Oh, is that so? All right, spit it out. <gasps> look at this. A diamond. This will look absolutely perfect on my back mat But I was the one that found it. It would look perfect on mine, too. Let's bring our pack mats and try it on them. We'll put it here for safekeeping. Well, who could have taken it? <laughs> we still need to check inside of Chusaka. <laughs> you gotta be joking. She'll eat you up. <gasps> Where are you going, huh? Inside Chusaka to get the stone out. No, I don't. Please. Ooh. I'm ready to do anything my friend needs me to. Huh? By any chance, are you looking for this? Huh? <gasps> Where in the world did you find it? I found a buried diamond. It looks like a diamond, but to be sure, we'll have to conduct a test. A raw diamond looks like an ordinary stone. But after cutting and polishing each of its facets, 
that special stone transforms into a rare and very expensive jewel that can adorn a necklace, a crown, or a museum's display case. The truth is, only a small part of all found diamonds is used for jewelry. It's because a diamond is also the hardest rock on the planet. That makes it perfect for cutting glass. Diamonds are used in making strong drill bits and cutting blades. Many important medical instruments could not be made without them. With the help of diamonds, it's even possible to drill through a mountain when building a tunnel. That's just how valuable diamonds are. They can cut a pipe and go well with a dress. Isn't it pretty? Only it's not a... Tom Thomas! We found a star! Oh, oh. And now it's gone. <sighs> to suck a degree! Oi, oi. Thanks so much, Fixies! I was sure my precious present was gone. And who is the present for? Katya, I think she'll like it. Now, I've got to tell you, Tom Thomas, that's not a precious stone. You got nothing but glass there. I know. But it doesn't matter. What? I was risking my life for the sake of a piece of glass? First, it was for the sake of your friend. And second, the cost of the gift doesn't matter. It's only the thought that counts. The Rock. Tom Thomas is back! So, how was your camping trip? Super! You've got to check out what I found. Rocks? That's just half of it. Wow! Is that a screw? It looks kind of strange. Because it got petrified millions of years ago. <laughs> Screws weren't around then. They came much later. And how do we know that? It could be the first one discovered. And maybe it's not just some screw. Know what I'm saying? Are you saying that we might be looking at... A fixie! Fixies believe that their ancestors came into being not that long ago, right when humans started inventing complicated devices. But what if that's not true? Maybe millions of years ago, before the dinosaurs, there were a different kind of fixies that inhabited the Earth. And maybe there were people then, too. And fixies weren't hiding from them. They were friends who they helped with everything. Together, they used to create inventions, construct buildings, and make scientific discoveries. But then there was some horrible catastrophe, and this whole civilization disappeared! And what if someday scientists find traces of that civilization? Then ancient fixies will be discovered as well! That would be so cool! <laughs> My imagination ran away with me. You're right! He could be our great-great-grandpoosh! Or our great-great-grandmas. Do you think maybe we could bring it back to life? We could screw it in somewhere. You get energy from electricity, right? What an idea! But what if our great-great gets super scared because everything is different? We can build him a prehistoric world to wake up to! Time to bring him back to life. And you, Tom Thomas, disguise yourself. We'll break him like this. We need a different way to do it. We need more power for this. <laughs> there wasn't any electricity back then. That's why shocking him won't work. <laughs> Oh, our great-great ancestor, who came to us from an ancient home, be released from this stone. Be free! Why is it always so difficult with relatives? Wake up! Wake up! And what if... Everything. This is just a way.
waste of time. Oh, uh, let's sing that song about the screw. Our song. No, Lick, it's never gonna work. You don't know that. We can at least give it a try. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them with the little screws in there. Look, it's moving. It's impossible. It really did. If, if you, you think, think a screw, screw is nothing, nothing take, take it out, but just beware. Tom Thomas, hey. Well, how was your camping trip? Uh... Seems to me quite a success. Yeah. So, let's see what you found there. Do you know what this is? Well, it's a rock. It isn't. It's the stalk of a sea lily. You mean a flower? An animal who lives at the bottom of the sea. Its stalk makes it look like a flower, like a lily. On planet Earth, there are lots of rocks. Some of them are hiding deep below the surface, and others appear with volcanic lava. Remember those fairy tales where an evil witch would turn everything living into stone? Well, it's really happened, just without any magic. Some prehistoric plants and animals were petrified way back when, and they've remained that way ever since. Thanks to them, we can get an idea about what life was like on Earth millions of years ago. And this one's a devil's finger, the squid's ancestor. How do you know all this stuff? When I was your age, I collected fossils and rocks. Let's go. I'll show you my collection. Do you think any of our ancestors were sea lilies? Uh-uh. Shame. Why did I let myself get so carried away? There weren't any ancient fixies in the world. <sighs> but I... I still believe in them. They just haven't found the right rock yet. But they'll find it. I know they will. Buttered bread. Tom Thomas, it's not right to eat when you're playing a game. I know your mom told you that. Come on, stop distracting me. Oh no, that's the game. Now that's what you call Murphy's Law, Nola. <laughs> no, that's the law of buttered bread. The law of buttered bread. <laughs> There's no way that's a real law. People say that bread always lands butter side down. Scientists laugh at that, but there is a grain of truth in it. First of all, a sandwich usually falls from the low height of a table, and so it only has time to make a half turn. Second, the side of the bread with the butter is heavier, and that pulls it towards the ground. And third, people remember the bad things that happened to them. So, they believe that butter bread always lands the wrong way. That's just goofy. I don't believe in that law. It's true, and not just for butter bread, but any open-faced sandwich. Then let's do an experiment. We got tons of food in here. We just cover some bread with it and then throw it. All right, let's do it. Well, jelly side down. Uh-huh. And the cheese went down. And the chocolate spreads out of luck, too. The bologna didn't do any better. Do you believe me now? Not yet. Let's keep going. We should try some other methods of throwing. Oh, that's everything. There's nothing left. No, there's still some turkey. Where did you see that? Here it is. Take some from this plate instead. Your mom already cooked it. Hey, turkey, show them how you're supposed to fall. Aha! Didn't I, uh, tell ya? You vandals! Why are you throwing food all over the place? It's simply awful. Hey, give it back! Please, we're testing the law of buttered bread. You gotta be kidding. Your mom is gonna love you for that. Can you please put the sandwich on a plate already? It's too heavy for us to keep holding it up. Good, there you go. Tom Thomas, do you have any idea at all how nutritious that turkey is? And delicious, I'd imagine. 
And turkey's a healthy food that has lots of protein, vitamins, and what do you call them? Micro-elements. That's not all. Eating that turkey could make you grow. If you eat that sandwich, you could grow a centimeter. I think that's true. Yeah, and it'll give you some extra strength, which you're gonna need when you clean up your kitchen. Humans eat food not only to make them strong, but also to grow and develop. Take a look at all these different foods. Do you think they have anything at all in common? Well, actually, they do. All foods contain nutrients like proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Combining them properly is the science of nutrition. Foods with fats and carbohydrates give humans energy, while those with protein are essential for helping children grow. People love to eat food that is delicious, fresh, and assorted. Try to eat all sorts of good foods like salads and soups, cereals, potatoes, vegetables, and meats, and not just sandwiches. But when it's time for a little snack, a sandwich can be just right, and it's so easy to make. to all of our bread. There's only one slice left. I made an experiment. A real one. I see. Well, science requires sacrifice. And there's no doubt that scientific experience is way better than playing with the phone all day. Right? Mm-hmm. Can I have another piece of turkey? I don't know why, but I'm really hungry today. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, that's what I call Murphy's Law. No! That's what they call the law of buttered bread, Dad. Did you hear? The law is a law. The frying pan. Woohoo! Can you do this? Easy! How about this? And voila! I could be on skates and still do it. If I was on skates, I could jump ten times in a row. Well, I could do a hundred with my eyes shut. Then let's see them. There's no skating rink. There will be. What will, will there be? A skating rink. Where? In the frying pan. Uh-oh. All right, my bragging buddies. Go get your skates. Fixies love playing sports. You might find Fixie adults working out with weights or maybe working on a gymnastics routine. Fixie kids love having Fixie board contests or taking part in parkour competitions where they have to run, jump, and hop over all sorts of obstacles. These kinds of competitions usually take place inside of sophisticated appliances. Orienteering is held inside these appliances, too. That's when Fixies use a map to follow a complicated route. And the route is quite exact. You can't make one wrong turn. But the Fixies' favorite game has got to be hide-and-seek. Nobody can compete with them in this game. You don't believe me? <laughs> Watch! The rink is frozen. <laughs> So, who's first? Nola, come on! <laughs> well, are you going to jump? <laughs> wow, class! <laughs> and that's all? Not at all. No lick! No lick! No lick! No He's lick! not gonna make it. Too short a start. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do anymore because I'm injured. Sure, say no more, Mr. Braggart. Then it's your turn, Simka. Now watch and see how it's done. La 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 Oh, wow. Nolik, you never had a chance. La 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 Just like always. She gets in my way, and now she's gonna win. Nolik, do you really want to beat her? Uh-huh. You see the salt? 
What? You think we should cook her? Of course not. But if we put some salt on the ice, it'll melt. Simka, didn't you say that you were gonna skate with your eyes closed? Piece of cake. What? Can't do it? Watch and learn. One. And two. Well done. Wasn't fair, guys. You wouldn't have done a hundred jumps anyway. Let's start the contest all over again, but this time we play by the rules. Oh, look, there's a scratch in the pan. What? What a disaster. You can cook just about anything in a frying pan. Meat, fish, vegetables. In order to stop food from sticking to the pan, modern frying pans are covered with a non-stick coating like Teflon. You can cook in these pans without even using oil. And they're easy to clean. But you have to treat this kind of kitchenware very carefully. It's better not to use metal spatulas or forks that can scratch it. Because you shouldn't cook food in a pan that has scratches on it. It can be really dangerous for your health. Yeah, this pan's completely shot. It's all because of your dumb bet. It's all because someone was cheating. Mom's back. Please, Simka, help me out, will you? I'll give you any wish you want. Or three. No, five. Five? <laughs> I can help you. If you guys jump up and down a hundred times on one leg, we could do two hundred. Tom Thomas, what do you say we make those crepes? These crepes are perfect. I just love cooking with this pan. Why are you jumping? I want to make my legs stronger. <laughs> anyway, you never could have jumped a hundred times in there. Bet on it? Uh-oh. <laughs> Water. Hi, I'm all ready. Nolik, he's gonna stay home like we agreed. Uh-huh, see you soon. Who's that? Nolik, it's you. I, I gotta go. I'll go with you. No, we've got... We've got an important job. Little kids aren't allowed. Why can't I help you? Because this work is very demanding. Only it's boring. And you're impatient, so you'll bother us. Huh? But I am patientist. Patient, son? I mean, patient. Like, totally patient. Prove it, then. How? See that, uh, water filter. You have to count how many glasses of water it cleans. How many do I need to count? If you can reach a hundred, I'll believe you're patient. Why do they need that filter? Why don't you drink water out of the sink? Don't worry about it. You need to be counting. That was one. Without water, life is not possible. The human body is made up of two-thirds water. And people need to drink it all the time, but only when it's clean water. Water is transported from rivers and lakes into houses through pipes. Along the way, it gets cleaned of debris and dirt. But even so, this water might still contain toxic substances or harmful microbes. That's why people use filters to clean water for drinking. No bad stuff can get through this last line of defense. saying that I'm skin and bones. There you go. That's why you need to drink water. Drink some more. And some more. Come on, come on. Mm, that 
that's all. I ran out of room. You have to have plenty of room left. Why do you care about how much water I'm drinking? Because I gotta count how much water is going through the filter. I really gotta. Yeah, and what? It's gotta go through me for you to count it? I'm totally full. What am I supposed to do? I've been waiting here in the kitchen all day, but nobody's drinking. What's going on? <gasps> the filter is broken. You gotta call Simka right away. 415, 416, 417, 418, 418. Simka, it's an emergency! What? The filter's burning! <laughs> You're really funny, Nola. Simka, he's not choking! Something's going on over there. We gotta hurry! Where's the emergency? Look! So, what's going on here? Great. Now we're stuck fixing the filter. It's not broken. The flashing red light is an indicator. It means it's time to replace the cartridge in the filter. Since ancient times, people have been coming up with ways to remember things or do not mix things up. Knots on ropes were used as reminders that it was time to pay back a debt or reap a harvest. People would cut notches into trees to help remember numbers. Later, people invented the abacus, calendars, and day planners. And now, things are even easier because devices can give us reminders. Alarm clocks help people get up on time. A loud oven timer can save a pie from burning. The green light of an indicator shows that a device is turned on and ready to be used. A red light shows the opposite. <laughs> Today, smart appliances can tell their owners what they need to do. Without them, humans can be so absent-minded. It's all ready! Tish! This cartridge is enough for another 2,000 glasses. 2,000? And what do I do about this? Whoa. <laughs> All right, Nolik, you've done a good job there. Way to go. Yeah? If you want, I can do it. Tom Thomas, want some water to drink? Uh-uh. I can't drink anymore. And I can't wait anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like his indicator is flashing on now. <laughs> <laughs> the baby dog. You gotta get out. We can't all fit in here. This time we'll take a ride, and next time you can. And I'm by myself again? Hey, don't worry. I'm gonna be getting such a cool car later today, Tula. Will it be a big one? It'll be big enough for all of you. Tom Thomas! Here, your toy came just like you wanted. Awesome! What is this? A baby doll? <laughs> Splendid! Mom! Where's the car? Oh, it's got to be some mistake. I'll find out for you. I'm calling them. It's good to be a kid. People take care of you, feed you, buy you toys, and read you bedtime stories. But in return, you have to listen to adults. Go to preschool, then school, and always remember to put on a hat. All kids dream about being a parent, at least for a little while. Because moms, they're just superhuman. Human moms can do laundry, cook meals, iron clothes, and check their kids' homework all at once. Fixie moms can fix irons and hair dryers and can teach young fixies how they can do it. It's a shame that you can't become a parent before you grow up, but you can have fun pretending to be one. That's why girls like to play with dolls. Boys usually don't like it, but I don't see why. Dads can be really cool, too. What am I supposed to do with this now? I'm not some kind of girl who plays with dolls. <laughs> hey there, come on now. That baby doll's a real cutie. Why don't you put it down and we can get back to racing? Wait, wait! The baby's hungry, he needs to eat. Thomas, help me! No, I won't! Won't you please? He's crying, don't you hear? Ma -ma. Oh. Mama! 
That's all? After that boy? But what if something terrible has happened? My dolly's eyes were shiny. Toes and fingers tiny. He never acted whiny. I love my dolly so. Now my life is gloomy. How this happened to me? I can't find my cutie. My dolly's gone. Oh no. Oh no. Honey, don't be upset about the car. It's gonna get here soon. By the way, why did you put the doll in the cupboard? It was so hard to find. But is it still home? It's in the box over there. It's gotta go back to the store. My poor dolly's gone. Ma, ma. My dolly! We're supposed to send him back today. Oh. Only I told Mom that I'd rather keep him. Hey! And what about your big new race car? Later. Did you do all this for me? You know... Papa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Plastic. Chuggy, go! Chuggy, go! Keep Chun, going! Faster! You can do it! Faster! Come, Come on! Chug, so chug! Oh, chug! Go, chug! Go. Go. You're go. almost go. there! That was one fast time. If you could just keep up your training, you could beat the record. <sighs> yes. Yes, you're right. Time to take matters into our own hands. Please hold on. Tom Thomas, did you take out the trash? Uh, I didn't have time yet. Good. That's just what I wanted to hear. Uh, and that bottle on your desk, do you need it? That's great. Thanks. I've got five more of them. And this is only the beginning of our mission. Operation Rescue. What is your dad up to? Operation Rescue. Could be... Your dad might be a superhero. Do you think? <laughs> no, like, you're too funny for words. What's so funny about that? Who else would be taking part in rescue operations? <laughs> and those bottles, you think he needs them for heroic deeds? Or maybe he decided that it's time to sort your plastic waste. Do, Do what? what? Plastic is a durable and practical man-made material. Lots of useful things are made out of it. Packaging, toys, appliances, and even furniture. But you shouldn't just throw out things that are made of plastic. Nature can't digest it, and so all that plastic will leave the Earth covered with a thick layer of trash. To avoid that catastrophe, we all can help. Put plastic into specially marked containers, and then, instead of harming the planet, it can be turned into something useful. No, that doesn't make any sense. Simka, superheroes do not collect trash. And we'll prove it, you'll see. Of course. It's our evolution. I mean, a revolution. 
Together, we'll save planet Earth. You're so lucky, Tom Thomas. Together, we'll save planet Earth. Tom Thomas, do you have any more plastic in your room here that I can take? One second. You still use those things. For such a noble mission, it's not a problem. All our useful things should be taken care of. Dad, I really want to do it with you. Want to do what? What you're doing. You know, the operation about saving the planet, like you said on the phone. Ah, you mean sorting out the plastic, don't you? Sure. I've got a couple of these boxes filled up already. Will you help me take them to get recycled? Really? What for? Just dump it out with the trash. Son, if we don't start doing what we can to recycle, I'm afraid our planet <sighs> will become one big dump. There's lots of stuff that humans just throw out that can be transformed into something totally different. For instance, an ordinary plastic bottle can be turned into a ballpoint pen, or a watch, or a chair, or dishes, or even some clothing. For example, there are some factories where old plastic is sorted, ground into pieces and cleaned, and then stretched into thread that can be used to make brand new clothing. Isn't that fantastic? But this is only possible if people learn to collect and dispose of unneeded bottles, bags, cups, and other plastic separately from the rest of their trash. Imagine how happy nature will be when the piles and piles of plastic disappear from our woods and from our seas. Let's take care of our planet together. I thought you were trying to rescue the planet. Like a superhero. Actually, we are superheroes. And we're also a bit like magicians. Really? Give me a second. See this shirt here? It's made out of recycled plastic like that. Cool, right? No joke! So, you ready? Then it's time to go. Uh, those lucky humans with their trash to sort, and we... We Fixies do all that we can to make appliances live longer. That way they don't get thrown away. And we should sort our trash as well. That's a good idea. The detective. All right, there yeah, that is. Wasn't it great that we got to stay after class and watch that movie together? Yeah, that film was great. That detective. What a guy! He figured out exactly who did it. Ooh. Solving a crime's not easy at all. But it looks like a lot of fun. Ugh. I think it would be so cool to go solve a crime. <gasps> Where's my lucky screwdriver? I can't do anything without it. Here we go. This could be the crime of the century. Detective Nolik, are you ready? But we're not... There's no escaping our fate, colleague. Our time has come. In order to become a detective or an investigator, you need to be very attentive and astute. Because detectives solve mysteries, find missing things, and detangle the most twisted cases. For instance, who ate the whole cake without permission? A real detective will notice the minor details right away. Crumbs under the sofa, a trail of paw prints across the room. By following the clues, a real detective will easily discover the thief. All right, it's time for us to figure out who stole the screwdriver. And the screwdriver, don't we need to find it? Not now. First, let's find the thief. Oh, look at that. It's Digit. Digit? Huh? Why are you back at the laboratory? Our school classes are over. I want to talk to the professor. I came up with the coolest thing to make. What cool thing? It's a secret. That's a bit hard to believe. 
All right, now, Suspect, what were you doing after school? What do you mean, Suspect? There must be some mix-up here. You're trying to dodge the question? You want to change the subject on me? That's it. I'm leaving. No screwdriver, no experiments. Well... You want to take over for you, genius, and that's why you stole his lucky screwdriver. You're under arrest. The main qualities of a detective are intelligence and logic. Logic is an ancient science that teaches people to think with reason, to help them solve problems, puzzles, and riddles. Do you want to feel what it's like to be a real detective? Then try to figure out what I'm describing to you. I'm thinking of an animal that you can meet at home or on the street. It has a tail and it's long. You have any guesses? A dog, a cat, or a mouse? Uh-huh. There's not enough information yet. But what if I add that it meows and sleeps all day long? Then the answer is clear. A detective works the same way. He collects the facts, decides what's important, gets rid of what's not, and only then figures out the right answer. Understand? Then you're ready for another puzzle. Tell me, who doesn't belong here? Are you gonna talk? <laughs> what funny mustaches you got there. Oh, it's a party, right? Mm-hmm. They arrested me. Is this a game you're playing? <laughs> Tulan, you believe that a lucky object can bring good fortune now, don't you? Well, yeah. And what? Now it's clear. You helped Digit steal Eugenius's lucky screwdriver. Yeah, because you like lucky stuff. Arrest her. Tula, how long do I have to wait? Sibka, you gotta see this! We caught the criminals who stole the screwdriver from the professor! Cool, huh? Just awesome. Let's go, Tula. She stays here, under arrest. Yeah, I got it. Come on, let's go. We're not joking around. Oh, and exactly what proof do you have? What proof do I have? Well, uh... Just what I thought. You have nothing, Fire. She's their partner, of course! Nolik, arrest her at once! What did she do wrong? It's insane. Now do what I said. I won't do it! Ah, you're with them! Stand with the crooks over there! Hey, we're partners, aren't we? Now wait a second. I'm wondering if you were the thief. Me? Yes. Right! It's not me, I swear! I'm a detective! <laughs> Nolik, please tell him! You put it away? In the warehouse? Oh, Elisa, I've told you a hundred times. Please, don't touch my mess. Uh, appears I was a bit off track. You'd have been better off looking for the screwdriver, detectives. That's what I told you. All right, we'll look for a new tactic to use on our next case. What do you mean on your next case? Where's my lucky soldering iron? So, Detective Nolik, shall we begin? <laughs> the virus. Tom Thomas! Pass him on the turn! Good job! You're almost there! Now put the pedal to the metal! Titties! Ha! Take that, Johnny! You lose! You want to race him again? We can. We just finished the last level. Oh! We were just getting started! Wait a second. Let's see what it says here. Congratulations! Your prize is a smartphone and a collection of brand new levels to race! All right! Class! Click on it! It's not smart to just click on random buttons. Hmm. There's nothing to worry about. Whoa. Hey, what's going on? Someone messed with the numbers. There you go. Didn't I warn you guys? Do you think it might have been Johnny? Johnny! Of course! He got upset that we won, so he put on the cap of invisibility. Then he snuck into the room and deleted everything from the computer. Stop! What are you talking about? A cap of invisibility. This has nothing to do with Johnny at all. Looks like you got a virus. Then we need to get Tom Thomas' mom in here. What for? Isn't it obvious? She's a doctor! She'll get rid of this virus in no time. That 
won't work. Quit it! A computer with a virus isn't treated like that. A doctor won't be able to help here, especially a dentist like your mother. Then who can help us? You need special software for that. Antivirus! A computer virus is a destructive computer program. It can not only delete or steal important information, but completely destroy your computer. And the scariest thing about this virus is that it spreads very quickly and can infect the other computers on the network, very much like a human illness. To find and stop these viruses, you need to use an antivirus program. Antivirus programs also protect computers against new infections. And by the way, your dad's computer uses antivirus software. And mine doesn't have it? No, you won't let anyone near your computer. You never have any time. Dad, let's do it later, okay? I've got to finish one more round. It'll only take a minute. Oh, look at that. The virus is starting to wipe out everything now. That means this computer will disappear. And this room, too. And, and all of us. We have to save the computer right away. Tom Thomas, your dad has a box with antivirus software. Bring it! Games, music, cartoons. There are so many interesting things on the internet. But just like in the physical world, you have to follow some rules when you're online. First, you should only visit websites that you know. Sometimes a destructive virus could be hiding behind a pretty picture, and there are plenty of scammers on the internet. That's why you should never give anybody you don't know well your address, or send an SMS so you can download a free game. If you happen to get a letter or a text from a stranger, you should show it to your parents right away. Only communicate with people that you know. And don't just sit all day playing on the internet. There's still nothing better than going outside and playing with friends in the fresh air. That's it! The enemy's destroyed! Well done! Let's check if everything works! Tadish! 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 Now we need to deinstall the software. How come? There's no need. No, we have to. That program should only be installed by an adult. Otherwise, your parents will figure out you got help from Fixies. Sorry about that. All done. And here comes my dad. Dad, will you install this on my computer, please? You need it right away? How about a bit later? No, we can't keep putting it off. There you go. Now your computer is protected. How come you became so responsible all of a sudden? Oh, Dad, you don't know what kind of viruses are out there roaming the net. You're so right. Please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let.